Welcome to Shorty Supercoach and Happy New Year, guys. What's going on? It is New Year's Eve right now, but I will schedule this one to come out on the 1st. So I hope you had a good night last night. Mine is shaping up to be uncharacteristically quiet. So I bought the Maduris, bought the Canadian clubs before, but we'll just see. At this stage, it's not looking anything too reckless, but we'll see what the night brings. But uh, look, hopefully you're traveling all right. If you are a bit worse for wear, I'll hit you with a little story in a moment, one of Shorty's marketplace adventures. And then I thought we'd take a look at the Ford line. If you haven't got enough of a headache already, I thought we'd just loosely work through that one. We're not going to break any crazy ground on the Ford line because it is the 1st of January. And our forward line is really going to need the pre-season to show us what is actually going to be on offer for us. Because at this stage, it's pretty slim pickings. But I thought it'd be fun to just look at a few players that maybe could save us. Because it is looking tricky and maybe how we can approach it. But a um, little story, a little marketplace buy. I'll tell you what, I've uh, got a little rumpus room or spare lounge room um, just behind my room here. And it's mainly been used as just a clothes drying random storage had the foosball table in there but this holidays i thought nah, nah let's let's spruce it up once upon a time it had a couch in there and you could watch tv and it looked good so i thought stuff it i'm i'm clearing it out getting a good couch and we'll rock and roll from there cleared it out and actually found this ripper couch for like a hundred bucks on marketplace barely being used i'm like how on earth have i found this and messaged them yep cool it's free I hit them up within 19 minutes because I was scouring. I'm like, nah, we're, we're finding a couch today. Found the couch. And then th these things always take way longer than you anticipate. <laughs> I'm thinking like, yep, I'll roll around to your place at 3. We'll have this uh, tucked away. I'll be home by 4.30, 5 o'clock at the latest. It was about half an hour away. Anyway, my mate is in um, Queensland and he's got a ute, so he said, go for it, mate. You can use the ute for your couch. Cool. So I got the ute and, um, well, before I even got the ute, my mate who, who lives with this mate who owns the ute, I had to get the keys off him. And I said, oh, you're going to be home today because I sort of need to get this couch and need the ute. He's like, yeah, mate, home all day, come whenever. Sweet, thank you. I roll in. He's nowhere to be seen. <laughs> I'm like, bro, where are you? I've said to these people that I'm coming around at 3.30 or 4 o'clock. I need this ute right now. Where are you? He's not replying. I'll give him a call. Nothing. So I'll call me mate up in Queensland. Where's your spare key? Doesn't answer. I'll swing around to mum and dad's. The car with the tow bar's not there. Because at this stage, I'm thinking, if I can't get this ute, I'm going to need to hire a trailer or something. Nothing, nothing. Anyway, we end up getting a hold of the bloke. Use his spare key. Get the ute. All right, we're off and running. And as I look at the ute, you know when you look at something and it just visually looks a little bit different to what you remembered it? I remember this back of the ute, the tray looking pretty big. And I'm looking at it going, this will be a miracle if this couch fits. Um, so we're rolling over to Drysdale and I'm like, this is either a two-tripper or it's a hire your trailer from... Um, from bloody Bunnings operation, and we we get there, and the guy's like, "Oh no worries, mate. I've got I've got a Ute as well. I'll just carry one half of the couch. You carry the other half." Cool, thanks, bro. Oh, no worries. We try to put the small bit in his Ute. Doesn't fit by about ten centimeters. Day. I was like, "Fuck." Anyway, at this stage, I'm like, "All right, we're gonna have to go to Bunnings." So we drive another ten minutes, get this trailer, which is just look. Shorty's got a few strengths. Maybe one or two. Being a handy tradesperson, not one of them. <laughs> I'm looking at this fucking trailer like, where the hell does this screw into here? And how do I know that this isn't going to fall off halfway down the highway? Anyway, a couple of calls, a couple of YouTube tutorials, and we're on our way. And uh, we go back, we load it up, we've bought some rope. We're, we're tying this thing. It was me and Caitlin, my housemate. We're tying rope around everywhere with knots that would not pass in the scouts department at all. But I'm just wrapping it around, pulling as tight as I can. Being like, please, just let this thing last for half an hour for us to get home. Um, and, and in amongst all this, we're trying to feed it through. I jump in the tray. And I don't know, I still don't know how I've done it. But I've like nipped myself. I've, I've got a serious cut going on down my fucking leg. It's like, it's like a good... Ugh. It's a solid cut. It's like the length of my finger. <laughs> so 
<laughs> we, we'd finally locked this thing away. I'm about to drive back. I'm losing blood at a crazy rate. I've got me <laughs> got a tissue on it. Like, Jesus Christ, I'm... You know, I've gone from worrying about losing this couch to losing about three litres of blood here, but it wasn't actually that bad. There's a bit of mayo on that, but I was like, shit, this is no good. Still kind of sore today, but anyway, we finally we finally get home at about 7.30. 7.30. This was about a four and a half hour job, which I legit thought would be about an hour and a half, and I get it home, we set it up, it's looking beautiful. And I don't know if you guys have heard me tell a couple of stories about my sister's cat. Long story short, my sister needed a place to stay unexpectedly, so she's with me at the moment. Um, Has a cat. hate the cat. I like cats, I do. Grew up with them. This cat is a piece of shit. It throws up on the carpet like once a fortnight. Oh, jeez, it just... I've got to feed it at the moment because my sister's at a festival. That little buddy's doing the 40-hour famine, guys. So if you want to donate to Little Peanut... No, I am feeding it. I'm not neglecting my sister's cat, but it pisses me off. Anyway, it comes out and it's sniffing around the couch. And I'm like, mate, if you scratch that thing or throw up on my new couch, you'll also be hanging from the Christmas tree, buddy. But um, And then I'm just watching the tennis last night and I hear fucking scratch, scratch, scratch. I'm like, fuck off, mate. I fucking launched at this cat like I was at a game of footy. <laughs> I was screaming at it. And it's still live ball because as I uh, came in to film this, it's sniffing around. I, I just had words with it. You know, I said, look, babe, Peanut, if you lay a hand on this couch, I will be putting you outside and letting nature take its course. This is an indoor cat, so just let nature unfold. It can run back. It can run off to the wilderness. It, who knows? Let the universe take care of that one. But nah, it's a little bit dramatic. But the cat does my absolute head in. And if it does destroy this couch, things are going to be tense around the Shorty household. But <laughs> anyway, that was that was my day yesterday. Um, I've been smashing marketplace. I actually bought some like shelving for my room. Um, but yeah, anyway, I think that's about it in terms of story time hopefully you enjoy that but shall we talk a bit of super coach um let's have a look at this forward line and we'd love to know how you're approaching it i'm gonna go through a couple of bits and pieces as to how i'm tackling it all right so first things first i've just been playing around with the team don't read too much into it tristan cherry's in there you got ruben jinby who i am a little bit excited about with chuck sinclair in the back line and throwing a few things around the forward line but before we look at a couple of players that could be saviors to this decimated forward line, how do you approach it? And we'll learn a bit more in the preseason. We don't have much to pick from in the forward line, so do we bank in the defense and the midfield and the ruck with more reliable commodities and and sort of take some risks in the forward line? Because why not? We can't really bank on too many of these guys. Or is it the flip side? Do you actually go bankable in the forward line because... It is so trash, which means being a top six forward is actually going to be easier than some of the other positions. You know, if I said to you, what's the top eight midfielders going to be? Good luck to you. There's probably 12, 14, 15 players that could come into that discussion. If I said who are going to be in the top six forwards, well, it has to be McRae. It has to be a couple of these other guys we're going to talk about. Surely Flanders, like, I mean, it'd be an insane shock if they didn't average over 90 and that's all I think it'll take so it's an interesting way to approach it I'll tell you who I am having a look at and let's let's just for I don't know for uh for the visuals sake who could save us it could be Caleb Daniel now I'm a big fan of Daniel in the years gone by when he was off a halfback flank I used to love watching him Loved watching him play. He'd just go around darting little 45 kicks, 20 metres there, just waltz around so cool and calm and composed. But then he's been thrown around down back, even in the middle sometimes, um, or thrown up forward, I should say. And it has resulted in some strange scoring. Um, But if he does get put behind the footy, which I've heard a couple of murmurings about, He's a lock, straight up lock. Now, I haven't seen him in too many teams, but look at this hot patch through here from about rounds, whatever that was, to round 17. And and the rebound 50s are clear. You know, 
they're not all always correlating to um, his position. It's a bit hard to say purely just on rebound 50s, but he has been a bit of a Mr. Fix-It. Bailey Dale, uh, Ed Richards have sort of taken a bit of the pie. But if they do shake things up and Bevo does give us a bit of a look of Caleb Daniel off halfback and take a more kick-ins, then, yeah, he is underpriced and an absolute lock because if you look at some of these numbers in years gone by, um, I think 2017 and, and 2019 are the clear-cut ones for me. Hasn't quite been the same player since, but a little bit of that's been positional. A little bit of that has been... He, he has had some down times and copped a little bit more attention. But another one we should talk about, and I'm just going to... Uh, for the sake of visuals, I'm going to chuck Tommy Green out there just so I can put Dustin Martin there and just say, um, could he be a guy that could save our forward lines? Now, previously, I'd put Dusty in the, nah, his days are done um, in terms of contributing consistently to Supercoach, but the back end of last year was bloody impressive. I just thought he'd sort of passed it. His best days were behind him, but... From round 17 onwards was huge. He had some massive games, particularly those last two. Now, I had a bit of a look, and I believe it's a direct correlation to his centre bounce stuff. Um, so what was it? Round 17, Dusty caught fire. And, and you can clearly see, okay, round 13 and 14, he, he had a bit of time in there, but... A definite change. There were some some games when he was in there, but definitely look at this. He was used sparingly in the first 12 rounds. Then he was quite a consistent feature in that centre bounce. Only about one in three, one in four, but it's a lot more than, you know, only getting 3% or 8% or, you know. So watch this space. They do have Hopper and Taranto and Prestia and Bolton will be keen to get some opportunities in there. And, and do they start giving some other guys like Dow and some younger players more opportunity through there? I don't know. So I'm not red hot keen on him at the moment, but he is one to just keep your eye on. And, and they're the two main ones I wanted to put on the radar. Dylan Moore, super consistent operator, one of my favorites. I always seem to pick him up in Supercoach Draft, which I love. Um, is very much a forward now. There was a time when he played as a midfielder. He can find a lot of the footy, tackles hard, and always seems to kick goals. So he's a solid option, but I'd love to see him get more chances in the midfield, but clearly can score even as a forward now. Other than that, how many guys could save our forward line? Not sure. Bailey Smith would have been an absolute dream. That's not to be anymore. You know, Taylor Adams and Tom Hawkins, two guys that are close to the end. But given what our forward line has to offer, if they have a good preseason and things go their way for Taylor Adams in terms of getting some midfield time, worth thinking about. I would be pretty surprised if I went with him. I've talked about Josh Rochelle in the Adelaide preview as a bloke who so much talent, so much upside. I don't know if it's going to be this year, but wouldn't shock me if some stage he gets more midfield time and is a real likely type. Um, and then it is really getting into that range where we start to go, well, do we just go the likes of Zach Fisher who could roll off half back for North Melbourne or could Bailey Humphrey really take that next step? But it is pretty hard to get in front of Anderson and Rowell and Miller and Swallow and other players in that um Gold Coast midfield, similar for Archie Perkins, likely type, but there is a lot in front of him for the Dons midfield, and you know we start to get pretty slim down here. So at this stage, I, I mean, even someone like Billings has been talked about. I don't know where he is. I think he's even a bit cheaper. Again, if he gets a solid roll, half forward, rolling up high, he could easily average eighty-five and be a really nice pickup, but. Um, you know, could Riley West slot into more midfield time without Bailey Smith? I I doubt it, but um, just a random one, maybe one for your draft. So I think at this stage we've just got to watch real closely how the forward line is shaping up. Can we get any gems? I just wanted to put particularly Caleb Daniel on the radar. McRae has been a little bit off 
his absolute best and he's not going to get back to averaging 120. But I wouldn't be surprised if he slots in there a little bit more now that Bailey Smith is out because he did find himself more of a half forward flank outside type. But he is such a ball magnet, he just finds a way to score anyway. But um, at this early stage, I just wanted to, yeah, sort of a loose video, just spitball some ideas and didn't really know where the video would take me. But just wanted to throw a couple of names on the radar and pretty much just wanted to say Happy New Year to you guys out there and see how your New Year's went. So if you got up to some shenanigans last night, please let me know. Um, and hopefully you're nursing the headache all right. Get yourself a Nurofen, get a Powerade India, and have a good day. But I'll, uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a good one. Cheers.